part one of this Metal Gear retrospective, we saw how Kojima climbed his way up the bottom rung of the Konami ladder and released a hit game. But he wasn't done yet. After the release of Metal Gear, Kojima thought he would move on to other games, because to him the story of Metal Gear had been shown. The next game that Hideo Kojima worked on was a game titled Snatcher. Snatcher was inspired by movies like Blade Runner and The Terminator, and also an anime titled Bubblegum Crisis. In Snatcher, an amnesiac would set off through a post-apocalyptic world and fight a race of cyborgs that kill their victims, copy their likeness, and take over their life in society, like a regular invasion of the body snatchers. Unfortunately, due to time restraints, Kojima's team was forced to leave out the final act of the game. But regardless, when Snatcher released in 1988 for the NEC PC-8801 and the MSX2, it was praised for its cinematic cutscenes, storytelling, and for how it pushed the boundaries with its mature content. It was also praised for its graphics, gameplay, including light gun segments, and its writing and film quality voice acting. Then in 1990, Kojima was involved with the production of SD Snatcher, a super deformed version of the original Snatcher, and his team was finally able to release the ending that they originally intended. Konami was happy with the success of Metal Gear on the NES, so without the involvement in Kojima, they decided to create a sequel to it. The sequel was titled Snake's Revenge, and it would be more of an action game than a stealth game like its predecessor. One day, Kojima met a man on a train. The man informed Kojima of the Metal Gear sequel he was working on, a game Hideo Kojima had no idea was being made. The man was a fan of the original, and told Kojima that he would love for him to make a real sequel to Metal Gear. So Kojima did just that. Paying no mind to the abomination that was Snake's Revenge, Kojima created an official sequel to Metal Gear titled Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. The game would take place in Zanzibar Land, where Dr. Kiyo Marv, creator of a fuel source called Oilix, has been kidnapped and Solid Snake has been sent in to rescue him. Metal Gear 2 played much like the original, but with the addition of a new crawling gameplay mechanic. It also upped the ante with its graphics and storyline. The game added more to the Metal Gear mythos, adding new characters and expanding the story of others. The bad guys in Metal Gear 2 were also a step up from the previous title. This time around, they had enemies like a top secret guinea pig of the Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces Unit of NASA, known as Black Ninja. A mercenary named Night Fright, who wore the first ever appearance of the stealth suit that has now become a serious staple in the Metal Gear series. You had to listen for his footsteps across different surfaces and watch for his gunfire to see where he was. Or of course, throw on the thermal goggles. Even the weaker of the enemies were still fairly interesting, like Running Man. He was an Olympic runner and once ran the 100 meter dash in less than 10 seconds. To defeat him, you had to lay down mines in his path and then chase him into them. All while the room you were in is filling up with poisonous gas. If it weren't for the gas in the boss fight, there would have been no way for you to die. Metal Gear 2 also threw in some interesting gameplay ideas. Like one point in the game where you hear knocking coming from the wall next to you. The knocking is actually Morse code and you have to look up how to translate the code in the manual of the game, which is an awesome idea, but it probably sucked for the kids that didn't have the instruction manual. The Metal Gear series continued another series staple here, plot twists. It is revealed that Gray Fox is now working for the bad guys when you see him piloting Metal Gear. You eventually have to fight the Metal Gear with him in it, and after defeating him, your equipment is caught on fire, forcing you to get rid of it. All of it. Then you must fight Gray Fox again, this time in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the center of a small room lined with landmines. After defeating Gray Fox, you move on to fight the one behind the Zanzibar Uprising. The one. The only. Big Boss. Turns out he did not die after Outer Heaven exploded at the end of Metal Gear, and now he is back to finish what he started. On arms, you had to gather card keys to enter different rooms scattered around the area, to finally find a lighter and a spray can. Pretty much creating a makeshift flamethrower with a lighter and a can of hairspray, Snake takes out Big Boss, burning him to a crisp before escaping once again. The game was amazing, and it was another hit, with those that played it. Unfortunately, Metal Gear 2 released toward the end of the life of the MSX2 and people had already moved on to more powerful gaming systems, so it was released only in Japan to a very limited audience. Once again, Hideo Kojima felt that he was done with the Metal Gear universe, and once again he moved on to other games, but a few years down the line, he would be once again expanding the Metal Gear universe. Join me next time to learn about how Metal Gear went solid.